Special delivery? A tree. This is our tree. Oh. Mama, our Christmas tree came. Lit. You guys had your birthday about 20 weeks ago. Emirates was two weeks ago. Yeah, how old are you, Sierra? Six. Number six, right here. Yep. Age. We'd have to mark down her age. How old is she? She's 25. 25. 27? <laughs> yeah, we don't know. <laughs> morning, Everett. Good morning. What's going on this morning? I'm checking out on my favorite too. Can I see your teeth right now? It's All that when they came out yesterday. All right. Wednesday today, November 23rd. Today I'm going up the mast. Shannon is going to be pulling up some lines here and we have some assistance from one of our neighbors, Keith. Uh, before we do that, I'm just going to set up the lines to make sure that they're running properly. The plan is for me to go up on the main halyard and oftentimes I see people just doing the main halyard with no backup, but I'm going to see if I could rig a backup here with the topping lift. So the topping lift is this one, the green line that goes to the back, which we don't need right now. And the topping lift is just coming out of the mast right here, which is green. I'm gonna take the topping lift, rig this back to the helm. So now that the downhaul is taken off, I have this block, which is free to run my topping lift straight over here, over this clutch and onto that winch. The main halyard is on this winch, so we will have two winches, two people. I'm scared. What are you scared about? When you go up the mast. What are you scared about, Everett? You fall. So this is how it works. Daddy is sitting on a chair and I tie some ropes to the front of the chair and then mom and a friend of ours, they're gonna use the winch to pull me up. So we have to make sure but those lines- the winch break? Well, the winches are pretty strong and I've got two of them, one backup and one's the main one, just in case. What if the backup one breaks and the main one breaks? Well, then we'll have to, I didn't got to put hold a, on at the top. I didn't got to put on a third one. Okay, here I am. We're ready to go, Shannon. How are you feeling, Shannon? Thank goodness Shannon, Keith is here. Thank goodness Keith is here. I'm all strapped in here. We got the harness, got the bags and supplies, and we're gonna go all the way to the top. I feel like this trip is more for video than it is for necessity. Well, we have to do it, don't we? Uh, do we? Yeah, I'm not doing it like for fun. I wouldn't go up for fun. Okay. The main reason to ascend the mast was to install the flag halyards which we needed for cruising to another country. Because we were having wind transducer issues, we were advised to check the transducer connection and put dielectric grease on it. Okay, well, that wasn't too bad, actually, I think, for me. Coming up here, look at this! This view. So I gotta fix this wind meter here. Actually, I'm just gonna pull this off and put some grease on it. People walking around. Hi, Shannon. Wow, you can see the beach from here. It's nice and cool. There's very little wind. I wouldn't want to come up here when it's windy. So far, so good. Okay, I'm gonna start doing some work now. Okay, here's a wind instrument. Connection looks clean, and halyard looks good. Okay, down another six inches. Okay, so this is the four stay right here. That looks pretty good, no corrosion. Jib halyard. 
It's okay there. The leopard mainsail is known to not drop all the way down on its own, so while up on the mast, I looped up the track with sail coach dry loop. Okay, looks good. Okay, Shannon. You made it up the mast for the first time here. How are you feeling? Uh, better now. <laughs> Were you up all night yesterday? <laughs> I knew you were feeling nervous, I could tell. We're not doing that again for a while. <laughs> I hope not. That's Long pretty high. Are you gonna be the next one going up? <laughs> maybe. Maybe, maybe not. No! It says clean water. Good job, Bean. Six ten epoxy. Put them in onto the deck of the boat. So they didn't have a caulking gun at Walmart. I'm gonna try and do it by hand instead. I shouldn't need a lot, so this should be okay. Because I couldn't get the six ten epoxy to work. I need a caulk gun, which I didn't have. And then I lost the static mixing tubes, which I purchased earlier. I'm gonna move on and try to get these Gorilla Grips in. So I've got two of them in here. Here's one screwed on, these two. So I've got my Rhino Grip mount. Bolt goes in there, nylon washer, and then the nut. Nylon washer because I'm putting in stainless steel against an aluminum frame. And I've got Tef gel to try and prevent corrosion here. We've got the OC tender mast and snap that in like that. And there we go. Gotta put, uh, okay, put two more up there. Two more bars, yeah. All right. Okay. Success. I hope. Okay, so I gave up. You do need a caulking gun for this, which I got three day delay to the project, but we'll get this done way better. This stuff is real glue. Yeah, this stuff is not coming off. Okay, this project seems like it's taken a month just to do a simple thing, but really it's probably taken two to three weeks to do, and maybe like a full day or two days if I had all the materials ready and everything like that. But we've managed to secure these footmen in. Seems like they're pretty strong. They are not coming off. We managed to get just about everything done for the tender. Here's what the battery box looks like. All strapped in, got an extra Velcro strap around the top, and that goes into the electric start. While I was doing this, I noticed a leak at the fuel line, so I added a hose clamp here, which I think you're supposed to have, and also added a hose clamp here. Zip tied halves of pool noodles to the mast of the OC tender, because that's where I'm gonna put the dinghy locking chain, and I just passed chain through the top where the painter comes out. That's 3 8 chain and uh, fire hose with a very strong lock. Do you want to have a look? Yeah. You can see how the OC tender looks after spending like a week setting it up. Ah. Did you cut it in half and zip tie that? Yes, I did. Wednesday, December the 7th. We're still here at Hollywood Marina and we are putting the finishing touches on our dinghy, which is yeah. called. Okay, so the OC tender here. You can see there's just a little bit of clearance. We're at pretty still waters here at Shroud Key, but even then with a little bit of swing, you're pretty close at having the dinghy hit the side of the boat. Here's the bow. Whoa, <laughs> it's definitely crossing over. So we have the davits not all the way up, but just slightly lowered. Uh, we've already added some extra eyes to the dinghy davits. We've moved everything to the port side. The original ones are on the left here. Stainless steel fabricators to install two more just to over to the left so that we can center the dinghy a bit better. 
The other things to note is that for the OC350, the best way to uh, secure the bridle, you have the two lifting straps. You gotta use both of them together. At the stern of the boat, you have the lifting straps here, which there's only one option, so that's the way to go. And this bridle is from just catamarans. If you want it to lift the dinghy higher, you would actually just hook this clip up to the top and skip this middle part, and that secures it very well for longer passages. We've moved the dinghy around backwards and forwards. We've used different combinations of lifting straps. We've tried different lengths as well, but this seems to be the best method to keep the dinghy on the back of the Leopard 45. Now, you hold this. Here. Oh, I see red. We tried getting the kids involved in boat projects. Today, we learned how to whip the end of a line. Try not to burn the tape here. Dip it. Five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And give it a little shake. Whip the line with the hole in the end. One doesn't have one, both have to. There you go. I think you need to stick it through the top. Close to the top and then it goes down to the bottom. Yeah, that's good. Pull it through. Uh, big end and a little end. So our big end is, our little end is gonna be, well, they say minimum three times the diameter of a rope. There, so I line it up here. Got the loop. Okay, now you do the whipping part as we wrap. Line it up. Very good. I'm trying to line up them. Trying to line up the whipping lines? Mm hmm Yeah. Your dad's fingers were always getting in the way sometimes. Okay. Move on. Okay, and then. So. Pull. Okay. Pull on both. And now we are going to make it so it loops underneath and back up and then we're going to burn it so it's extra secured. All right, we whipped it. That's what the line looks like. The end sealed off and the sides all wrapped around really nice. The end. And if you want to watch more videos, subscribe and smash the like button and comment down below. Uh, this is day two of provisioning. This is our second trip to Costco and our third and fourth um, shopping carts full of food and supplies. And uh, this is today's haul. Got a lot of beef there. Phoenix, napkins. Oh, baby. Thank you very much. The card you gave them, they were greatly appreciated of it. It's a Thank blessing you, everyone. for them. <laughs> a freezer with meats and fruit as we heard those items were hard to come by in the Bahamas or were very expensive. The vacuum sealer was easy to use and helped save a lot of space. We hid our drinks, canned and dried foods under seats and floorboards. Special treats like chocolate and chips were stashed away. Happy Seas was now fully loaded up for a voyage. What's your husband doing today? Found the He's gonna go crawl into the deep, dark dungeon of the boat. <laughs> the belly and the bilge of the boat. Yesterday we went out. Uh, yeah, it wasn't as stinky. I think we cleaned it out yesterday. It was stinky before. 
So yesterday we went for a quick day sale just to test things out. Good thing we did because we found a couple of things that would have been an issue had we just done a crossing straight away. We couldn't get the bow sprit out, so we managed to fix that and have to figure out what the rigging is like for the bow sprit. And uh, cleaned out our sea strainers for the air conditioner, which needed to be cleaned out because everything gets all gross because the marina water is very filthy. It was pretty gross there, had some barnacles in there and cleaned it out, lots of sulfur smell, smelled like Rotorua. Yellowstone <laughs> National Park, lots of sulfur. <gasps> and then all of that, from cleaning it out, the water drains into the bilge and it's really smelly. And then the bilge pump is supposed to pump that water out, but our bilge pump is not working, we discovered. So it makes a sound. The float switch is okay. Upon closer inspection, it actually doesn't pump water out. So today I'm going to try and fix it or troubleshoot it. That's right. Okay, you getting in there? <laughs> this is the tiniest opening of this boat. This is cleaned up already. We wiped it down yesterday, it was full of gunk. Oh. How is he gonna squeeze into this little tiny hole? Let's see. <laughs> it's not easy. How are you gonna Hi Everett, we should send you down here. I'll come down for you, Daddy. Okay. Oh, okay. The bilge pump just um, detaches here by some clips. The impellers look okay. The strainer looks okay. The pump spins, but doesn't push water through this hose here. I actually don't know why there's this connector. Maybe it's just so you can take this off easier, but I'm going to remove this. Maybe that's the valve for the backflow. Oh, is it a backflow valve? Well, so you don't get backflow. It pumps it out, but it does not. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. This goes up above the water line, so there shouldn't be any backflow. And there's a flap on the outside, so I'll take this off. This is a brand new boat, and this is happening already. <laughs> and we already have issues, things not working. We yeah, have quite a lot of issues. Okay, let's see what this looks like. This is a joker valve. The joker valve is fine, opens fine. I'm gonna fill this tub full of water and we'll see if the pump is able to pump out the water. Oh, jeez. So this is what it looks like, me and the bilge folded over. There is not a lot of space here. I'm in my swim trunks in case I get wet. We got bowls of water here to put into our other container. So I'm gonna tilt this up and that will turn the pump on. So that's pushing water out, right? Okay, so the water pushes out, so it works. So it's not the pump. Can you take that apart? So you know what? I bet you they installed this valve wrong. This valve pushes back. I was gonna say, it looks like it's the wrong direction. This valve is the wrong it's direction. It's on backwards. Isn't it? Like, do you see that? Yes. Because the water goes in there. Water's going in. That's where the joker valve is. It should be pointing the other direction. Yeah. It's backwards. Oh my god. Uh... Can I get the screwdriver? I didn't get it on camera. <laughs> oh no. Uh, Mom didn't get it recording. Working. Okay, climbing out from the abyss. We're gonna get a hose and really give this pump a test. So I've got the boat hook on the float switch so we fill up the build. Relatively easy fix, but an important one. Very important. <laughs> okay. High five. <laughs> Good job. We're just wrapping a couple things up. Last day with the car. Today is Wednesday, December 7th. We're looking at a potential weather window on Friday with low winds. Drew, how are you doing? That. Oh no. Just hanging the boat to 522. What's up, brother? We're going down to Miami. Awesome. After how long will it take for you guys to get there? Uh, probably a day. Awesome. Yeah, roughly a day in the nap. Amazing. Damn it. This is a grand voyage. All right. See you. Andrew's marina staff here. He's great. So we're thinking about going down to Miami or Key Biscayne tomorrow. No Name Harbor. That's a common staging area to Bimini the following day. Here are the beans. Hi, Dad. Is there anything you want to say about this marina? Is it nice? Did you like it? It's crowded. 
Yeah, it's pretty cramped here. But we got a new slip what out on. Slip to our one. Yeah, we're at 500 here now, and we're all the way at the very end, right? We used to be at 201, which was quite convenient, but it was hard to get in and out. So this is actually a really nice marina. We've been here for about six weeks already. We originally intended to stay, I think, what, a week? This week we are ready to go. We've got everything provisioned and outfitted. We've been to West Marine who knows how many times, Home Depot, Walmart. We got our fridge situation and provisioning sorted out. Worked out some kinks on our last mini day sale two days ago. Island Girl right here. Yep, so Cody and Debbie has been friends with us this entire time. And the kids have really liked looking after their dogs, right? Yeah. Oh, this was where we were before. So Sea Dreams is now here, Bali 4.6. We were docked here, well, most of the time, just until four days ago when we moved out. Did you like this spot more? It was easier to get off and on. Because we weren't against pilings. And then after that, we'd just go over here and park our car right here. Okay, so here's the marina. Oh, there's Shannon. Let's go have a look. It's maybe our last day here. Oh, our second last day. I want to say hi to everyone. Thanks for being our host for all these events. Oh, you guys have been great. We're excited for you guys. We're all clear? Okay, what does the bathroom look like? Oh, yeah. This was, which shower did you like? Was it this one? And here's the big one. This one has a bit more space. I like this shower here. The huge yachts are docked right at the very end. Portofino, Wolfpack. If I had a boat, like those ones, I'm gonna name it Big One. Wait, one. Can I see your teeth? Remember, I just lost a tooth yesterday. All I want for Christmas <laughs> is my two front teeth. <laughs> and Sierra's losing her teeth too. <laughs> Laurent came by with Tony. Last minute nick of time. It's tomorrow Saturday and we're going to Miami. That's our plan. We've just been waiting for this one last thing. We had the VHF sent off and now it's back. With that hooked up, some wires checked at the ITC5. It sounded like some of the connections were loose or over crimped and now we have wind. Do we have Empire Bus? I think we do. We have sensor readings. We have the wind. I guess there are no excuses not to go tomorrow then. Did you check the weather? Except the weather. <laughs> you know the weather, it's a north. It's directly north. And then Sunday it dies down. We watched the wind instrument readings closely that night, but the readings kept glitching on and off. We thought the issue were bad crimps, so I drove all around on the 11th hour looking for replacements. So we have the spade terminals, we have quarter inches. There are no 1 8 inch female spade terminals anywhere to be found. And this is just falling off this connector here. So all the connectors that I have, I don't have this one. So you think we fixed it? <laughs> fixed it enough to go tomorrow? Yeah, maybe. We'll have to see what it looks like tomorrow. Because now we can't see if it's actually even in the right direction. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. That was scary. <laughs> Let's have some donuts. <laughs> <laughs> 